Hi, Dave Kilmister here. Um, welcome to the second instalment in our uh, in our little series designed to improve your guitar playing. Um, hopefully, you've already worked through the stuff on the first DVD. Um, we're going to add to that with some totally new techniques, which we didn't cover in the first lot. Some some open string stuff, some slides, some tapping, some general craziness. So. Um, Good luck, and I'll see you in the first section. Okay, um, going to start off with some open string stuff. This, uh, the open strings are um, a fast guitarist's best friend, really. Um, you get extra notes for not really doing too much other than pulling off. So I'm going to start you off with this um, cool little example. I'm going to play it for you at a reasonable tempo, and then we'll break it down. Works great in E minor. Nothing too taxing, hopefully, there. Um, start off with the uh, open top E string. And then we're going to hammer the E. 12th fret, pull off, hammer the D, 10th fret, pull off, C, 8th fret, pull off, and B natural, pull off. Uh, from there you're going to go on to the B string, so, and note you're going to hammer there is the 10th fret, it's the note A, uh, then the G at the 8th fret, pull off. F sharp. So essentially we've got 12, 10, 8, 7, 10, 8, 7. Uh, if you can visualize that shape, I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the next two strings down, uh, an octave lower. So start off with the E on the uh, seventh, ninth fret, in fact, they've moved it <laughs> on the ninth fret of the G string. Uh, D on the 7th fret, C on the 5th fret, B on the 4th fret, uh, then you're on the D string, A on the 7th, G on the 5th, F sharp again on the 4th, and finish off with an E at the 7th fret of the A string. So really slowly together, 3 and a 4 E and a... Quicker three, four, and uh. um, that was a fun, obviously, various different uh, permutations you could do, do with that little phrase. It's quite a nice one. I've just made that up, I quite like that. Let's go through that one. Um, e to G, pull off. Uh, D to E, pull off. C to D, and B to C. You see this is all left hand at the moment. The right hand is, is sat there, um, obediently meeting all the, uh, the low strings, keep, keep everything as quiet as possible. Uh, onto the B string. So we've got um, A to B, G to A, F sharp to G. And then exa exactly the same phrase as on the top two strings, an octave lower. So again, you've got the E to the G on the G string this time. Uh, D to the E, C to D, uh, B to C. And then finally on the D string, A to B, G to A, 
F sharp the G, and E on the A string again. So slowly that would sound like this. Kind of. Let's try that again. I've actually, literally, I've never played this before. I've just written this. this is kind of like it. Okay, let's try that again. Fantastic. Loads of notes. Not really too. Uh, not really too taxing there. Obviously, vast, um, vast amount of uh, different stuff you could do with that. Um, that phrase on, on, on one string. I'll show you another um, idea that I like to do sometimes. Uh, again, this is all one-handed. Um, just stays essentially on the B string. I'm sure you'll recognize this. Um. <laughs> Nothing much. You know, you watch your left hand, it's not really doing too much. But... Sorry, Bach. So I'm just going to show you that phrase. Um, it's all played on the B string. You can actually play it on any string. We'll maybe have a look at that in a sec. But we're doing it on the B string at the moment. Starts with the E on the fifth fret of the B string. F sharp on the seventh fret. G on the eighth fret. And then back to the E. Second phrase, or second, the position shift. So we've got an F sharp on the 7th, G on the 8th, A on the 10th. Um, now we're talking G, A and B, which is 8, 10, 12. Um, then we're up to the A on the 10th fret, A, B and C. So, so far we've got this 3, E and a 4, E and a... And then simply going to go down the scale. So that's 12, 8, 10, 7, 8, 5, 7, 4, 5. Um, fancy in a different key, let's try it in the key of A. Can't actually remember what key the original is in. Is it Toccata in D? Possibly? I can't remember. Could do it in D. Um, obviously, open string, you're using, um, using it as a pedal, to what they call a pedal tone in classical music. Pedals can either be higher or, or, or lower, depending on what uh, you're after. Either higher and lower, in fact. You can have two pedals. Um, this is what it sounds like on the bottom E string, probably a little muddy, but um, maybe with a bit of a uh, palm muting. It's quite cool, actually. I like that. Um, so that's, uh, that's another great thing to do with, with open strings. A um, couple of... Uh, a couple of years ago, I uh, managed to see Angus Young doing his um, on-stage guitar solo, which kind of re revolved around a similar kind of idea. This time, I believe it was on the B string, playing the F sharp on the seventh fret, the uh, D sharp on the fourth fret, and then the open B string. I just really hammer on the little finger. Pull off to the first finger, and then pull off the first finger to the open B string. You might wonder what this right hand's doing. It's kind of adopted this sort of crab-like <laughs> approach on these strings, and all it's really doing is 
I don't know what it does either, to be honest. I kind of look down and think, how the hell did it get into that position? But um, essentially, it's just there to, to act as a, a mute, to mute all the other strings other than the B string. So I'm using the side of the thumb to take care of the, the bottom three strings. I'm resting the pick, actually, on the G string to keep that quiet. And remaining fingers will take care of any higher strings. Uh, in this case, it's just the top, uh, top E string. So... The reason I do that, if I took to the hand away, you get all these open strings ringing. It's just not a not particularly nice idea. I sometimes I, I tend to use this um, this little girly hairband at the top there, but um, for open strings, it tends to change the key slightly. Mm, it's not great. Let's not worry about that. Um, so all uh, all I remember Angus doing was uh, taking that shape. Playing it uh, around the seventh and fourth frets, uh, moving it up a semitone. So now you've got a G and an E, and an open B string. Again, move it up, uh, this time two frets. So you're going to have an A, F sharp, open B string. Cool. He was probably writhing around, uh, spinning on the stage in a, in a pair of uh, burgundy shorts when he was playing that as well, but that's, that's optional. You obviously don't have to do that. That's kind of a nice little uh, exercise. It's a really good workout for the little finger. You notice I'm using the little finger for this. You could use the third if you insist, but really you should, you should get used to the, using the little finger. This is just... Especially if you wanted to continue. That would be kind of a nice little uh, addition to the, uh, the phrase you've got already. This would uh, be the notes B and G with an open B string. Obviously a bit more of a stretch now. You, you know, some of you with huge hands could probably still do that with first and third, but I'd... I'd Okay, um, a good exercise would obviously be to do that same kind of thing um, onto different strings as well. Um, obviously every string is going to feel slightly different, um, not just because of the thickness but also because of the angle of the, of the hand if you did it, for example, on the A string. Feels very, very, very different. Um, it's, it's actually quite. It's, it's a lot more awkward on the on the lower strings generally, because you, you tend to lose. I, I tend to lose that little um, that little shape that I try and try and achieve on the on the top strings. Still do it on the top E string. Anyone's anyone's you like. Um, the set exactly the same as the Takata and Fugue. Just. Um, Try and try and get used to using these uh, open strings as much as possible. Um, okay, so this has all been strictly left hand so far. Uh, so let's try let's try some open strings with some picking. Um, this is an idea I heard uh, Nuno Betancourt do on the uh, first Extreme album, I think it was. Um, I can't actually remember exactly what it was, but it was kind of based on this sort of idea. So you're basically playing the single notes, kind of based in A harmonic minor, if you know the notes to A harmonic minor, that's a good thing. Uh, G sharp, A, B, C, so you've got four, five, seven and eight. And D, E and F on the uh, 10th, 12th and 13th frets. So you end up with these kind of things. Um, Okay, so you've got a single note, and then three open, three open notes. Um, 
kinds of fun with that. Again, you can try that on uh, whatever strings take your fancy. Okay, so there's really, the left hand is obviously very, very easy. There's not, not much happening there. It's all kind of in the right hand, so. Um, let's have a quick look at the right hand. For, the, for, um, for picking, I tend to use, well, I, I, I use the same pick for everything, to be honest. It's a two millimeter black Jim Dunlop thing with a picture of a cute alligator on the front. I don't know if you can see that. Um, I tend to hold it very lightly um, and just the very, 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 very tip will be striking the string. Okay, so. The fact it's so heavy means that it doesn't bend. So you haven't got to wait for the pick to kind of bend around the string as you, uh, as you strike it. Okay, so theoretically you can keep the pick fairly, fairly close to the string. Um, important thing when you're um, picking, in fact, when you're doing any of these exercises, I mentioned it on the first DVD, I'll mention it again now, is uh, breathing. You have to breathe as normally as, as humanly possible. There's a great temptation for guitarists when they're practicing any of this kind of stuff to <gasps> and just tense up. And as soon as you tense up, as soon as you tense the muscles, it actually acts like a break. Um, it you you know muscles don't work properly when they're when they're tense. Only when they're relaxed will they kind of will they work properly. So um, if we tried something like this very very slowly. Just going to basically cycle those uh, those three notes A, B, and C. So as you practice that, make sure you're breathing. And try and keep the pick as close to the string as possible. You don't really want to be doing that. So my, my picking tends to come, um, I get asked about this a lot, and I'm really generally less than helpful. I'm really not entirely sure where the picking comes from. I just know that it's as relaxed as possible. It feels like it's coming from the forearm. It feels like the forearm is doing that. And it, so it looks like the motion is actually coming from the wrist, whereas actually the wrist is just so light that the forearm is moving it, and it looks like I'm picking from the wrist, but it's not. It's, it's kind of more of a, more of a forearm kind of thing. I don't think, I think, you know, if I try to do it from the wrist, the wrist, you know, we're talking about smaller muscles, it gets tired quicker. And I certainly wouldn't recommend the kind of this strange picking that I see some people do, just, just with the fingers, you know. If you do it with the forearm, it's, it feels, feels much the same as if I was playing, the, if I was playing some rhythm parts, you know. It's that kind of, it feels much the same. but obviously a lot closer to the string. Um, so all that kind of motion, which is essentially the forearm with the wrist being really loose, like that, okay, there's no, no tension in the wrist whatsoever. Just imagine you're, a, you're unconscious, um, much like New Year's Eve for me. Um, <laughs> imagine you're unconscious and someone's trying to wake you up and they're just kind of doing that. That's, that's the kind of motion that you're after, but um, obviously a smaller, smaller version of that for, um, for these picking things. Um, okay, so everything that we've done uh, so far has been using open strings. Um, if you, if you want to play in a particular key and you find that the open strings don't really fit, then there's, a, there's an answer to this, which I used to do. I haven't done it for, for ages, but putting this DVD together kind of reminded me of it. Uh, if you want to play in something like, if you if you like that first lick, for example, the one we started with, and you want to do it in G, for example, then what you have there, your first finger, um, it's a movable bar. Okay, so slap it on the third fret. Um, 
So let's just uh, show you that again really slowly. So all, all I'm doing, literally just taking the side of the first finger, resting it at the third fret, and then doing exactly the same. And once you're hanging on to that note, gives you time to get the hand back round again. That was a little rough, I might try that again. Um... That's pretty crazy actually. Uh, not necessarily recommended, but this you know, just gives you an idea of what you can do. First finger, across the third fret. So um, there you have it, key B flat. Okay, in the first um, first in instalment of this uh, of this little series, um, went through some minor pentatonic shapes. So if you if you already know the minor pentatonic shapes, then this section is going to be really really easy for you. Uh, e minor pentatonic. Obviously, um, but let's use some of the other shapes here. Let's um, let's use shape number three. Starts on the third note of the E minor pentatonic scale, which is an A. So I, I'll just give you the notes quickly: A, B, uh, which is five and seven. In fact, five and seven for the bottom three strings: A, B, D, E, G, A. B and e, uh, B and D there on the fourth and seventh, and then fifth and eighth, E and G, and then A and B on the top two strings. So why not pull off to the open top E string? I hear you ask. You might notice that on the, on the last couple of strings, I was actually using the first and fourth finger. I was, it surprised me as well, actually. <laughs> it would kind of make sense, more sense to use the first and third. But I think because my, you know, as, as normal, when you start playing your little finger is kind of the weakest one, I kind of, I think I overworked it when I was younger, so in some ways that feels, feels easier to play it with the little finger than the third there. But, um, so all I was playing on the descending version was just a, a B, a and then just just playing it four times on each string. Then the G and E with the open B string. Um, D, D and B. Um, A and G. E and D. And B and A. So twice, four times on each. So that kind of works, why not try it with shape number four, for example, in E minor. So it's kind of cool. Um, you haven't got, obviously you haven't got to do this descending pattern, you could try various ones. Uh, quite like that. Um, so we're talking about the notes B and D here. Pull off to the opening string. And then G, A and G. Open B string. Then we've got a, a D and E. A and B. E and G. And B and D again. So you can end up with those kind of ideas. 
Again, nothing too taxing, not, not really, because you, you, you've got the open streams there taking care of, um, uh, taking care of a quarter of the work anyway. So um, every, every fourth note, so. Same thing with shape five. Okay, so we like open strings. Open strings are our friend. Um, doesn't have to be based in E all the time. Let's make use of the open B string in a B minor chord. In the first, um, first DVD, we did some stuff around um, some fairly basic pentatonic shapes. I believe that was one of the exercises. In, in, I think we did it in D, but this is in B. Uh, F sharp, A, pull off to the F sharp. You can use the flat five, I love the flat five. And there, it's, a, it's an F natural. Just to make it sound a bit more um, unusual though, what we're gonna do is pull off with the first finger to get the open B string as well. for a bit more of a Van Halen type sound. Let's try that with a bit more palm muting. Okay, uh, that concludes our look at um, open string licks. Um, obviously there's a whole plethora of more of stuff that you can, uh, you can find, so go and experiment. And I'll see you in the next section.